Hey guys, we're live. This is a funny time to go live. It's Wednesday afternoon at noon, but I'm heading downtown, so I said I'll just do a quick live stream now because I'm not sure what time I'm coming back. So if you don't know me, it's Heather Boyd. I do Wire Lady TV every week, and we do troubleshooting of ideas for wire art and jewelry. Still working on these designs for the artistic wire jig. So the last two weeks I did letters, and I've only got up to, I think, the letter F. So that's a slow process. So at some point, I will definitely uh, do uh, more of those. And I'm just going to open up the video on my computer so I can see if anybody hops on. It, I know it's a very funny time of day to be doing a live stream. But I said, I'll just I'll just do it today. Why not? We'll see. And if you, got, you guys can watch the re replay as well. So I'm going to flip the screen around. And... It's going to be a quick one today, so we'll just bring the screen down here. Just let me set it up properly so we can see everything. And I also had a question for you guys because I find that the background, I had a couple of people say that they had trouble seeing the wire on the background being white. So I'm going to get you guys to uh, give me some feedback about whether the background is better in white or black. So we'll see how we're going to... Do with that so that this is the jig this is the artistic wire deluxe jig kit i've been doing a lot of different designs for things some of the things i've done in my past live streams i did this face and what else i'm gonna have a few things here i don't have much handy but i, I did the seahorse so that was cool uh, this one's really nice the little the little angel and also just the lettering with the word love. And so when I did the word love, I put it on a, a background, like a kind of a card, like a card stock. And so what I do for that is I actually, hey Peggy, how are you? Welcome. Funny time of day, but I'm going out this afternoon. Hi Tanya. So I just want to show you guys, I have these cards from Michael's that I buy and sometimes they have writing on them. So I just cover them with like a little bit of scrapbook paper like that. And then what I would do is actually superimpose uh, some of the wire stuff on top. And one of the last, I think last week's tutorial, I showed you how to do this card with the love. So that's kind of cool. And today I thought I'd do another couple cards. So there's this one, uh, which is watercolor paper. And then they also, Michael's also has larger card stock and they come with envelopes, which is great. And so this is actually a watercolor, abstract watercolor that I painted myself. And so what I do is, I don't know if any of you are painters. Hey, are you interested in joining any social media app? Hmm, I'm not sure what that is. Love, love these, says Mrs. Love. Thank you so much. So this is watercolor paper, and we just put, uh, I just tape it. Hey, Clarice, how are you? Thanks for hopping on in the middle of the day. So for the watercolor, I just take watercolor paper, and I actually put it on a hard board, a hard surface, and I put tape around the outside, and I paint. And the nice thing is when you peel off the tape, uh, it makes a nice border on here, and then we superimpose it on here. Are you in any? I'm not sure what you mean by social media app. Do you mean Instagram? Because I certainly have uh, that. And so here are a few things that I've already done. So let's try a couple of new designs, and then I'll put them on the card, and we'll see how, how we go. And I also have the black background. So I'm just going to, as a test first, just to show you guys the difference. So here's the white background. Uh, you make nice things. Thank you so much. And Miss Love says, I always have issues with wire. What wire are you using? So for the jig, I'm actually using aluminum wire. So this is on the white background and this is on the background, the uh, black background. So I don't know what, what you guys find would be easier for me to work with. Do you think Wonderful, thank you. Yes, and I also use the artistic copper wire, but on the jig, I find the, the aluminum wire is easier because it's soft. Thanks, Tanya. So, uh, so yeah, so let me know what you guys think. Like, is it going to be easier to see if I work on a black background or on a white background? Oh, now it's blurry, so just let it focus a little bit. Uh, oh, of course, it's going to do this blurry thing right now. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Black for sure. Okay, so you know what? Let's do the black. Let's try the black this time because I've never done 
it on the black background and we're going to see how it goes. So it's always great to get feedback, but in any case, we're just going to do the, this right now. I don't you even know what kind of wire I use. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to know. There's J. Okay, definitely black. Awesome, black background. Okay, so let's go for that. This is a good, see, that's why it's great to listen to you guys because sometimes I don't realize if something's just a little bit off. So it's good that you could give me your feedback. That's fantastic. So here's the jig, here's the pegs, and I've done quite a few sketches. Here's some other ones I've done, like a, a puzzle piece, a coffee cup, a wings. I thought that would be cute, wings. The shoe, I have a tutorial for a beaded shoe, which is really cute, cute, and the butterfly. And then I, I'm going to today just try the, I want to try the trumpet. So Peggy says, I use sterling wire, but that's when I had a good paint job. Yeah, I get you. Sterling is very expensive. Sometimes I buy sterling on Etsy and it's a little cheaper. And I used, uh, when I need to use sterling, I use something called Argentium sterling wire. And it's actually a lower tarnish than some of the other types of sterling wires. I don't know if you've ever heard of that one. So here's the jig. And so what I'm going to try to do is just... Try to follow my what I've done here. So we're going to start with three pegs for the the I guess the little note things on the um, on the trumpet. So we're going to go put the three pegs. And what you always want to do with the jig because it's really if you don't put the little plugs on the back, I find they get really wiggly, and uh, it's really hard to um, make a nice like make a nice design on it because it wiggles around and they don't hold in place. So let's just start with those three. So Jay says copying the jig plate pattern is, to, oh, it's disappearing. Let me see. Is for sketching patterns. It's using it. Yes, that's what I do. So I photocopied these that came with the kit. So I have a ton of these that I can sketch them out, which is fantastic. So Peggy said, I saw a hack that you can get those little packets that keep them in food to stay fresh. And keeps from tarnishing. Oh, oh, that's smart. Yeah, I think I know what you mean. That's a great idea, actually, for to, for non-tarnish. I know when you buy silver findings that they put little packets of something in the in the finding thing. So that's kind of cool. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna just kind of guess where I put my pegs here. So I did um, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then one, two, three. So we'll put one there. And maybe one up here. I'm going to be missing some of your comments. So Daphne says, hi. Jay says, silica gel. Yes, exactly. And Peggy, I forgot what they're called. That's ex You guys are, are figuring it out. That's awesome. So let's just put these ones in here. I might have to adjust these a bit, but we're just going to have a little, a little guess. I like doing these live streams where I haven't actually tried these designs, like you guys know me by now, I just kind of troubleshoot. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Daphne says, hello from Alaska. That's awesome. My my parents just went to Alaska on a cruise not too, too long ago. And uh, yeah, they had a great time. So let's try to put a couple of these here for the larger bits. I think I'm just going to wing it. We'll see how it goes. These Sometimes these... Uh, pegs might be like too big or too small. It's hard to get them the perfect size. I have some little hacks when you don't have them the right size. Sometimes I'll use a marker end or something if, if I don't quite have the right size um, peg. So and then down here maybe if we just put these ones here because we want to do some kind of I'm gonna. I'm not gonna put plugs on those because I'm not sure what those are gonna do. So let's try the trumpet. I have a piece of wire. I always cut it too uh, big than too small, and I think the easiest good thing to do is gonna be to start with the um, with the pegs here at the top. So let's try that. We'll start with those, and those are nice and secure because we put the pegs on the back. So we're gonna just do a few little rounds here. Just. Bring it around. Sometimes it's a little hard. Like when I make my own jigs, I, I actually put nails in a wood and it's I find it a little easier because they're, they're not so high. Like the trouble with these is they're very high up. So sometimes it's hard to maneuver. You have to kind of wind them, like pull it up a bit, wind them near the top and then push them down. I think that seems to be the easiest way. Otherwise your shapes get a little distorted. So if we're gonna go around here, 
and around here like this already I'm seeing it's not super like it's a little squishy there so let's move the pegs and I did secure them so let's just move these over a little because I find that's like not quite a right shape now my wire is getting a little distorted here but just because it's a prototype I'm not going to be too worried about it so if we go down here I'm thinking this should maybe even be bigger because this is going to be really small so yeah let's just try it a little bit more if we bring that one up and that one there let's try that okay and then like that and then what I usually do is after these videos I actually sketch out the the template nicely but if this works you can you can take a screenshot of the setup as well because I sell the templates but you know I, I totally don't mind if you wanted to screenshot them you don't have to buy them so there we go so we're gonna go like that so it's a little wobbly wiggly but as long as it's I'm just trying to see I think it's not quite one two three and over one so one two three that's it I knew something was wrong it's not quite in the right place so if we bring that there it didn't look symmetrical to me so we're gonna go here I can always do it with another wire after see now this looks a little big but might be okay yeah it's really wiggly now but just oh sorry I'm missing your comments so uh Jay says, could you place the pattern on the plate and just punch through? Probably, probably could do that, but the pattern, yeah, um, yeah because I haven't fixed the pattern yet. Uh, I usually just count them for now, but that's actually a good idea. And Kat says, hello everyone, this is Kat, I'm just turning in. Awesome, okay. So there we go, hey Kat. And uh, Kat, we're doing an odd time today because I'm, I'm going on vacation tomorrow. So I, I wanted to just do a quick live stream because I'm going downtown today. So we just uh, do a little quickie one. So this isn't too bad. Okay, I think it, we are gonna have to make a few adjustments, but it's not too bad. I think maybe these should be over a little bit more. This This part should be a little bit longer okay and you can always do adjustments after so if we go like that and what I'm thinking I could probably have even wound that around a couple of times I'm just gonna try something else if we go like that and let me just see because I kind of forget what the trumpet looks like now but it might be good to do let me just see if I have another I had an idea just to take the lid of a are you taking a trip for vacation? I'm just going up to my parents' cottage in Ontario to see my sister who's coming in from Vancouver. And next week we're going to Toronto. So it's not huge, you know, vacation, but it's just seeing people that I know and stuff. Toronto, we always like to go to art galleries and live comedy and stuff like that. So I'm just trying where I've just gone this around this a couple of times. I'm thinking like this is a little bit too big now so you know what I'm going to try to do is just go around these twice I want to keep it as simple as possible these designs so if I just go around it twice and then I'll deal with it after we're going to see what happens and then if I go like that so this is sort of a basic shape for the trumpet so let's see what it does okay we'll just so if you want to go ahead and screenshot that I don't know so I don't know if it's perfect yet or not but we'll try and then here is like the trumpet like this and like you could see it's a little bit wobbly there because of um because i just was experimenting so let's just do this okay and then if we try to adjust this one a little bit make sure my hands are in there yeah i think what you could do is almost hmm I think it's okay for now let's just let's just do it like that for now and then what you could do is you could see it kind of makes a neat little uh two uh, 3d effect here so I said I love to make accessories so much awesome and figures can you wrap the weaving wire Ooh, that'd be cool yeah that would be a whole taking it to a whole nother level to do uh wire weaving uh sometimes when I do when I do the earrings is I just like would wind this around the end just to keep it pretty simple. So I think what I'm going to do now is, I'll do it that way just for now, but really the sky is the limit with these designs. You guys can just like kind of start with the basic shape and then just go from there. So if I just, I'm gonna pull that one up here. 
So if I just hold these together and then wind this around a few times, okay, that's usually what I do. So what if I wind it around like that, this end I'm going to keep so I could poke into the card, or you can cut it off if you want to make an ornament. And then this part here, I'll just bend and I will do a kind of like, you know, the, the part you blow into for the, for the trumpet. And then to keep it simple, I could just clip it. Okay, we'll just clip it like that. And then, yeah, so that's not too bad. I feel like I'm missing something. I'm not quite sure because I've made these before. I think you could maybe adjust this part a little bit, some do some other things like that, but that's the basic shape. So maybe what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'll just leave it like that for now, and then I will work on some other ideas for that to kind of improve the design, but I think for now it's okay. So let's go ahead and try another design. So I think I'll just do two today. I'll keep it simple. So missing the vertical valves. Well, that's sort of what these are. They're kind of stylized. So that's the thing I'm gonna have to, those are like the stylized vertical valves, but you're right, because like, I'll have to find a way to do it slightly differently. I'm just trying to think, like maybe if these were up a little higher, it's true, eh? If we did that and up a little higher. So you know what, I'm gonna work on that design for sure, but I think as a starting point, it's good. And then I would maybe just, like if we, even if we put these down maybe, if we put these or put these ones up, I'm just trying to think if we, hmm. Let me try one more just to see see how, if there's a way that we could do that. Because you're right, they, they don't make so much sense if they're not sticking up, Jay. See, sometimes I forget what my how I did my designs in the first place. So let's see if we can do something with that. So if we bring that up, and then if we put another one here, okay, like that. But then I'm gonna have to see if it would work if we put one up here, like that's a, that's sort of a thicker one. Mm, yeah, I wonder if we did here, let me just try this. Cause sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So if we bring that around, cause what I, the trouble is you don't want too many pegs in this, you know, in the design. So, or you know what, let's see if we could do like that. If we put that one up there, that one like that, around it's gonna look like a bit of a hot mess but that's okay it's just it's just a starting point so if we do that now these might be too high but we can try it so if we go up here let's do the same thing where we'll do three yeah and this will just be the ex sort of an experiment we'll see if it works or not I'm gonna put one up there so we're gonna go like that okay and around like that and then this one. Yeah, it's all about kind of figuring out design eh? and seeing how you could do something on the jig that, and even if it's not perfect, maybe you can do adjustments after. That's sort of the key. So if we try it like that, we'll go back here because we've done that already around here. And then this one, I'm thinking maybe, whoops, this came off. Maybe the distance between these should be a little greater. So now I'm gonna lose my plugs, but if we do, do like that and do, is that gonna to be too much? Yeah, it might be too much, but we can try it. So if we go around like that, see we're gonna run out of wire now, but this will just give us a little bit of an idea. Let's bring this one back here. So and we're gonna go around here. Of course, I'm totally ignoring if you guys have any comments now. So missing vertical valve, valves below the, valve cylinders below the buttons. Wrap wire again in the two you just did only halfway that would be where someone might hold it and maybe two pegs. Yeah so I am going to definitely have to look more closely at some of the feedback but let's just try it like that. Let's just see like just see what I mean like it, it does that. They kind of look like candles on a birthday cake which is not really the look we're going for, but what if we just pull it apart? It's tricky because we're really restricted with the uh, pegs that we have, but that's kind of interesting what it's doing there. And you have to be really careful 
about um, like doing a nice round curve on it because they're not like super round now, but they're not, it's not awful, okay? So that's, <laughs> that's not too bad. So if we go like that, ran out of wire, of course, so you would definitely want to do like maybe another loop around here. But what happens if we just, we want to just finish it off. So let's just finish this one off, okay? That would maybe stick into the paper and then just go around like this. So already it's a little bit better. So Jay, that was a that was a great observation about the um, about the valves because it's true. I uh, when I do earrings, I do them more up like that. So so that was definitely great feedback. And so it's not bad. Looks a bit like a trumpet birthday cake, but it's okay. Okay, so I say I like the trumpets. I played for years. That's so cool. Awesome. So Jay, I challenge you to make a trumpet and put a picture in the Wire Art and Jewelry Makers Club on Facebook so we can see what it looks like. So I think if we did like a double loop here, it would be okay. I ran out of wire. So I will definitely keep working on the design, but that's definitely a good start. So let's put that at the side. I will. Awesome. I can't wait to see it. Fantastic. So the other one I want to try is a butterfly, because that one we could try to do quite simply. So I think what we're going to do is I'll just leave this. I'm going to have to reuse these pegs. So if you want to take a screenshot of that, you're welcome. Click. And then we're going to remove these and start again. So let's remove these. And we'll try to do some kind of butterfly. And then that should be good for today. So let's get these out. Put those there. And the butterfly, I think we can start, let's just use all the pegs we have and see if it's going to work. So we're going to put these ones here, okay, and then these ones up here. I think they're not going to be, it's not going to be super proportionate because these are probably too big, but we'll see how it goes. And then if we do a couple of pegs, Maybe up here. Let's see if they're more or less even. And then we want some like in between the wings. And then we're going to bring some down here. Again, I should probably have a picture of a butterfly, but for now I think we're just gonna do it quite quickly. So we're gonna go like that because my, my philosophy is always just start by starting. So even if it's not perfect, even if it doesn't make much sense, you know, that's how you get the wheels turning and how you figure things out. So if we just try to set something up and I can adjust it along the way. So we're going to maybe put these here. These probably are too spaced out apart, but we can try it. So let's just start with a basic kind of setup and then we're going to see what we can do. So, okay, hmm, I'm having a weird deja vu about the trumpet like I dreamed this discussion before. It's possible. Yeah, I, uh, you never know in life. Sometimes things just seem so familiar. So it's pretty incredible. You know, I meet a lot of people and, and some, some people that I meet, it just seems like so familiar, or like you've had a conversation before or something. Yeah, so there we go. So let's try something like this and see if it's gonna work. I'm not even gonna bother putting the plugs on the back because it's highly possible this isn't gonna work. So if I don't have plugs, I'm gonna to have to hold these down and go around and see what it does. Wouldn't that be a miracle if it worked perfect? <laughs> let's, let's wish for a miracle. There we go. So we're gonna go like this. So that's in there. And I have so much fun when I go downtown, I bring these grid sheets and I always take public transit, so I, I take the bus and I do sketches for different designs on the bus. And it's really fun. And I mean, some of them need a lot of adjustment after, but some of them aren't too bad. So if we just go like this, and then let's put a peg in the middle. And yeah, you're kind of restricted with these jigs because they're definitely, uh, you know, there's only a certain distance you can put the pegs apart and also 
the size of the pegs and everything. Like sometimes I even use nails. Like if I want a sharper bend, I'll stick a nail in there. And then like you saw, sometimes I use the lid from a glue stick or, uh, oops, I'm doing the wrong thing already. Sometimes I use the lid of a glue stick or a, a marker if I need a different size around. And then like, you know, I, what I should be doing is my little hack because I'm finding these pegs are too close together. So sometimes my hack is what I do is I just curve it manually by hand, okay? If I curve it manually by hand and actually make it wider than that peg, you know, that's something, you know, maybe I'll do that. I'll remove the peg. I'll, I'll do that little hack where I kind of smooth it with my finger, hold it down like that, and then make sure it doesn't slip and then go around like this because, and maybe I could make my own pegs. That actually might be a fun tutorial of making my own pegs to go on this jig, that could be cool. And so I do the same thing again, I do that hack where you kind of smooth it with your finger, okay? And then hold it in place and then go up like that. Okay, so what I might wanna do is actually, well, this one's already done, so I'm not gonna bother redoing it, but you'll see, uh, you'll see how it's gonna work. So what if we just take that off, okay? And then you can take like a screenshot of that, click and we'll remove it so not horrible it's not too bad so it's it's really in the finishing touches and so this is something what you could do is definitely add some beads uh, other things i've done is when i've made um uh, butterflies of fours i've done like little loops with the wire in there you can do that and so you can if you had a bead that was big enough you can you can put a bead there, put the the um, the bead through, the two wires through one bead. But let's see what we could do if we just wrap this around. Let's try to do the finishing touches. So Clarice, Clarice went click, yay, awesome. Yeah, screenshotting, screenshot is amazing. I use it all the time because I do a lot of like different uh, I do, I write a blog and I do all kinds of like, uh, recently I've started a podcast, so I'm interviewing friends and I'm, I'm doing, um, I put them in my blog and I put them online and stuff. And so often I have to screenshot images from their website or from, or from their video clips or something. And so it's screenshot I use all the time. So you can, if you want to make sort of like the body of the, like to hold it together a little more, you could even put beads down here if you wanted to. You could just bend this through here. Maybe just bend it around. I'm just going to play around with it to see how I can finish it. I don't think I'm going to add beads to this one because my idea was to more like use it for a scrapbooking thing. And so if we bring it back here, okay, and wrap it around. So it's just going to be wire. Okay, so it's kind of cool. You made, there's like a little body thing going on. And then, but the, the fun thing to do with the butterfly is you can even make like a little head if you want out of wire so you can get your round pliers. Okay, if we're gonna get the round pliers and then bring that around here. You can make it a little bigger if you want. And then bring that one up, okay. And then this one here, we can bring it around. Oopsies. So we're gonna bring it around here and then I'm gonna wind it around the top. Okay. I think I have a few tutorials already with butterflies, but I'll show you how I'm gonna finish it. So if we just go like this, and definitely you can add any kinds of beads. So this just gives you a basic shape. I really feel like this should be bigger. So probably what I would do is, let me bring this back. Probably what I would do is actually move this out a little more. Okay, let's move that out like that. And then rather than use that, I'm gonna just, I would do my hack with the rubbing it with my fingers. Either that, or I guess you could probably remove these and bring them up. But I think you might want it a little symmetrical, maybe not these top ones not to be as big as that, but you could definitely play around with that. And so now to make the antennas, we're just going to bring these. Oh, this see this kind of bent a little too much there, but that's okay. So we're going to bring these up. So what I do for the antennas is I'm going to actually clip them the same height. 
And then I'm going to get my ring form and just wrap those around the ring form. So I had the cone and we're going to, you want to do it to the back because we want some little wires to stick out into the card. So we're going to bring that around. Probably these wires could have even been longer, but they're not too bad. So we're going to bring them around here. Okay. Yeah. And then we'll just bring that around and you want to leave like a good little half inch or something. So we're just going to Bring this around here, okay? And then bend these ends a little bit. So like at a right angle to the back and this one too at a right angle to the back, okay? And then we're just going to bring these spirals in a little bit just to tighten them up a bit. So we're just gonna bring it in there Trouble with the aluminum wire, it kinks sometimes, whereas the copper wire is a lot smoother. And you tend to, especially for spirals, you'll get a nice smoother spiral with copper wire. But because the aluminum is inexpensive and it's very easy to bend and, and to um, play around with on the jig, that's why I use this, at least for my prototypes. So here we have, a little bit of a lopsided butterfly. Just the top is maybe a little bit small. He's a little bo a little bottom heavy, but it's okay. So here's our cute little butterfly. And then what I'm gonna do is put him on the cardstock. So let me grab that. And I'll put him on maybe my watercolor one. So what you would do for that is you take the watercolor paper and then you wanna kind of superimpose it like that. But what I would, I'm gonna do is flip it because it's easier to poke holes when you put this, you hold this flat against there. And then I just need a pin that I'm going to poke little holes in so I can stick it uh, in there. So I have my pins here, my straight pins. These ones I use when I make brooches. So we're gonna go like that. And then just put a couple of holes where you want to stick it in, okay? And poke yourself, of course, because I always do. Don't want to bleed all over this thing. I think I'm okay. And so we're going to flip it over. So Jay says, I still have some brass wire that would make a nice trumpet. Oh, that would be awesome. Oh, I can't wait to see what you make, Jay. Yeah, I'm going out for the day, but when I come home, maybe you will have made your trumpet. That would be fantastic. And uh, you guys always do like little tweaks to the designs that make them really special. So I'm excited about that. And even adding beads, you could probably add beads to it as well. So here we go. And Jay, wasn't that perfect? You were on the live stream today for me doing trumpets. That's pretty cool. So here's the butterfly, kind of cute, a little bit lopsided, it's all good. And then what you wanna do is stick it to the card. So what I'm gonna do is flip it over and this is, this is not my two-sided tape, so I'm gonna go get my two-sided tape. There we go, here's my two-sided tape. And we're gonna just take pieces of the two-sided tape. I usually use acid-free tape, but this one I don't believe is acid-free. It's just from the dollar store, so it's okay. I might have to use a little extra because sometimes the dollar store tape is a little cheap. So we're gonna go like that and, whoops. And then maybe one, they also have a two-sided tape dispensers that you can get at Michael's and stuff. So two-sided tape, we're gonna stick it on, center it best we can, rub it down. And there you have your beautiful butterfly card. Yay, that is so cute. Thanks, Kat. So guys, what did we do today? We did the butterfly card. Oh, and I do have one other finishing touch that I do is I print out these address labels with my name. So these say Art Cards by Heather Boyd uh, because I saw cards similar to this at the a local art gallery. So then I put the little art cards uh, sticker on the back. So there we have our butterfly. And then I would sign it here because um, especially since it's original, like an original watercolor, I would definitely sign it here. So I sign that like that. 
So there's the butterfly card, and there's our prototypes for the trumpet. This one that was a fail, and then Jay suggested the valves, and this one is a little bit better. These look a little bit like teardrops, but it's okay, we'll figure it out. So I'm gonna flip the screen around and say goodbye. Oh, I like I like Jay's uh, cowboy emoji. That's awesome. And Clarice gives me all this nice emoji. So there we go. Flip it around. Yay! There I am. Oh, I left my cupboard open. There we go. Let's close that. Oh, and this one too. That's some of my art collection, which is really cool. A bunch of friends of mine that do beautiful art. Uh, so thank you everybody for hopping on. That was fun. And our technology behaved, so that was awesome. So Jay, be sure to make that trumpet and uh, share it in the Wire Art Jewelry Makers Club. And next week I'm gonna be in Toronto, so I might do a quickie live stream from Toronto. I was thinking to bring a little bit of wire and some tools and go in some random location in, in Toronto and do a quick live stream. So I'm uh, gonna do that. And I'm gonna also try to finish up the templates for the letters of the alphabet because I've only got up to the letter F, which is, uh, it's a long process, so we'll see. Uh, somebody told me that some, uh, there were already um, templates for that online, so maybe you could find that as well. So Daphne says, glad I was able to see the live stream. Well, thanks so much for hopping on. And Jay, thanks for your well wishes for my vacation. And I'll still hop into the Wire Art group uh, while I'm away. And uh, have an amazing day, everybody. And we'll see you uh, hopefully next week for a quickie uh, live stream from Toronto. Bye.